Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm trying Pokemon Fusions, starting with a combination of Sand Slash and Aerodactyl. Honestly, I think this one is actually tremendously cute. It reminds me of like a sugar glider or a flying squirrel, and I feel like I can really make its anatomy work. Um, I kind of wanted to cover the whole thing in fur, but I feel like with Aerodactyl's very bat-like wings, that could be a little bit weird. Um, I think bats do have quite a bit of fur on their bodies though, so again, we have a natural sort of example of a creature with a similar uh, style of anatomy. I feel like Sandactyl actually kind of looks like a real Pokemon, so this first drawing was really easy mode. I didn't have to do anything crazy to make it look plausible, um, so it was a good one to start out with for that reason. I wanted to make it look almost like a natural like scientific illustration, so I used this like softer pencil rather than a hard inking one, um, and I did it on this sort of like natural paper texture so that it would look more like I'm jotting it down on my Pokemon adventures um, out and about as an explorer in the 1600s or something. Um, I just really think it looks super precious. Um, its face is like a little off-putting when you draw it more uh, detailed. Um, I just like don't know where its nose or mouth is, but like I'm not gonna add it in somewhere where it isn't clearly in the sprite, so uh, I don't really didn't know what to do with that, but I just assume it's kind of like a guinea pig or something where its like mouth is sort of underneath its snout. Um, so with that in mind, it doesn't look too weird. It kind of looks like an alien with these giant glossy eyes, but it also makes it look really cute, so I'm not complaining. The Pokemon Fusion Generator that I was using pretty much decided that Sand Slash colors were going to be the dominant colors for this whole creature, and I honestly agreed with that, so I kept it pretty much exactly the same as the sprite that it gave me. Um, it's a little boring, uh, but I genuinely think that it makes it look the most real and also the most cute. Um, I mean, it would look interesting with the purple, but um, I really like it with these sandy colors and I feel like it matches its type. In the end, other than redrawing it, the only major changes I made was that um, I made the neck quite a bit thicker because I thought that that head sort of just smacked onto the top of Aerodactyl looked a little bit precarious, but other than that, I stuck mostly to the sprites design. Next up is Charchen, a combination of Charmeleon and Hitmonchan. Um, honestly, I'm not very familiar with Hitmonchan. I hate fighting types generally, so um, I don't really use that Pokemon ever. Um, so I was kind of surprised to see it. Um, it reminded me that some Pokemon are just wearing clothes and that's just part of their design. Basically what instantly came to mind was like this little dinosaur looking cheerleader character. I know she's got boxing gloves, but I, I get this sort of like extremely energetic personality from her and I wanted to really lean into that. Um, the, uh, the two Pokemon combined here both have these sort of like spikes, um, rounded off spikes on the top of their head, so their heads actually went together fairly well. That's usually where this fuse fusion um, generator gets really messed up, is they like smash the face onto a head that looks just completely crazy. Um, but this one didn't look too bad. I decided to make the eye a lot bigger. Um, I just thought that it would look more more right. Um, because Charmeleon is like one of the very first uh, Pokemon ever designed, um, I feel like it doesn't look um, in its face uh, like the other modern Pokemon. A lot of people have been talking about how like they're gradually making them cuter and stuff, so I wanted to make it look a little bit more like this is a new Pokemon um, in the new style. Um, I really like this like tennis skirt that's just sort of on this character, and I like those super powerful like 1980s um, uh, shoulder pad armor she's got. It's almost like a Caesar's Legion style like armor plates, I guess. Um, it reminds me strongly of Neopets for some reason, which I really like. I think the worst part about this design is the shoes. Um, they almost just look like a different color of feet, but they're like pretty clearly shoes if you look closely at um, the sprite. Uh, so I just, I really hate them. I wanted to put like shoelaces on them or some kind of like fabric-y detailing, but um, while some Pokemon do have things that look like clothes, they definitely don't really have any like fabric-y textures or anything, so I felt like I couldn't add that. I decided to go with more of a like pop cell shaded style because I felt like for this particular Pokemon it would look a lot better and um, I think that was the right call on this one. I think it looks really cute. I tried not to do too much like smoothing or anything just so that it has that like really strong, it almost kind of looks like a toy, sort of shiny look. 
So next we were given sea cans, and that's definitely a mistake. There's something very, very disturbing about this cute seal face on top of this snake. Um, I immediately got sort of like creepypasta vibes where I wanted to sort of turn its head in a spooky way, especially with those like retro Mickey Mouse eyes. I also thought about the logistics of having soft seal skin over top of the body of a snake and I feel like it'd be all wrinkly, it would be so bizarre. Um, I kind of wanted it to be cute because I think that it could be, um, but there's something just so disturbing about its lack of form that um, I don't know if I was able to fully uh, recover. I do think in a weird way these two Pokemon kind of belong together because Ekans just looks like a snake and is the word snake backwards and Seal is just basically a seal with a walrus's face um, and it's just seal misspelled. Um, so they have a similar logic to their design, um, but when you actually look at the two combined it's like kind of gross. Um, I think the tongue sticking out really adds insult to injury in some way. Um, it's like it's trying to be a snake but its face is completely wrong. I don't know, it just really, this, <laughs> this has some sort of like cruel and unusual experiment kind of vibe to it and I'm, I'm kind of creeped out by it to be honest. Um, I made the eyes a little bit bigger again. Um, I was having trouble really making them work. Um, again, I was trying to like work with the cuteness a little bit, but um, I think every time I tried to make it cute, it just got creepier. Uh, the rattlesnake tail also has sort of an ominous um, implication when you look at these walrus tusks, because it's like, are those venom tipped like a rattlesnake? Like. I think the generator had trouble mixing the colors together. There's parts of Ekans is like really bright dark purple um, that are just sort of like splattered in here and it almost looks like it was supposed to be shading. Um, I just really don't know um, about how that looks. Um, overall it mostly just looks like Ekans colors with uh, like little moments of purple for some reason. Basically I spent the whole time drawing this one trying to decide whether it was going to be straight up creepy or straight up cute and I feel like it fell awkwardly in the middle at the end. Well, this one is not going to be a great time. <laughs> This is a mixture of Mr. Mime and Kingler, and oh my god, Mr. Mime's face on that crab body. This is, this is actual nightmare fuel. So, um, I don't know, I just kind of approached this one head on. I didn't really know how to cope with the fact that Mr. Mime has spindly crab legs and giant crab claws. It's just... Ugh. And then because he's all fleshy colored, the spikes at the top, which looks normal on Kingler, look really disgusting on him. <laughs> it's just an actual nightmare. I changed his pose a little bit to make him look um, a little bit more reserved. I thought maybe that would help make him look a little bit cuter, but in the end he just looks like a weird creeper that you wouldn't want to encounter anywhere in any situation. Um, so I started to just lean into that. I learned my lesson from Seacans. Sometimes you can't fight the creepy. Sometimes you just gotta lean into it. And at least Detective Pikachu had a realistic Mr. Mime, so there's no way this can be as creepy as that because man, that like fleshy, like photorealistic Mr. Mime is going to haunt my nightmares forever. Like there's some Pokemon I just don't want to see realistic and that list entirely includes every Pokemon that doesn't have fur. Except maybe Bulbasaur, I thought they were pretty cute. Um, but anyway, uh, I decided to try to make him look fleshy even though the crab parts are probably supposed to be hard. I mean, Mr. Mime is such a fleshy Pokemon and it seems like he's the one who's sort of the like dominant texture on top of the silhouette of the crab, so I felt like I had to try and honor that as best as I could. I started off with more of like a cell shaded thing, um, like I did with Charchan, but I felt like because he's fleshy and gross, um, I should actually pr try to smooth that out in a few places. Plus it just made his like weird, disgusting head fingers look like they're like, I don't know, turkey feathers or something. It just looked odd, so I wanted to blend that out. I put shines all over him to grease him up and then he was done. Okay, so now we got Weepin' Bell and Aerodactyl. I don't know why I got two Aerodactyls in one run of this, but um, I guess we're gonna have to try to make this work. Honestly, this thing looks absolutely great. 
I think it's really cute and no problem. I can make this work. It looks a little bit like a parody of Batman for some reason with those ears. Um, I'm just not really sure what's going on. This is like if dinosaurs were made out of Play-Doh. Um, there's just... There's a lot to look at, there's a lot to consider. Um, I'm gonna try my best to make it look a lot different than Sandactyl so that it's not super clear that they came from 50% uh, the same parent. Um, but man, Aerodactyl's really gotta stay out of the dating pool for a while because their children are looking real strange and the world is never gonna be the same after this one. Um, it honestly looks like a an ancient meme or something. I don't know, there's something so haunting about it. Um, I decided to give it human hands because, you know, why not? Also, I noticed that there's actually a lot more fingers on Aerodactyl than I initially thought. Um, so it is kind of like it has a, a little grabby child hand, which while I'm certain that it would give this Pokemon a lot more utility and grabability, it definitely is really creepy and um, it really accentuates the disturbing nature of this creature's face. Um, those lips just look... I don't know, they look like a big old Cheerio. Um, I, I really don't know what to make of it. Oh, you know what it looks like? It actually looks like an onion ring. It looks like a pink soft onion ring. And um, uh, I honestly can't think of anything more gross than that. So uh, good job, Weavendactyl. You've really, you've really made strides today. Um, to be fair, there are Pokemon that actually look grosser and weirder than this though. Maybe I'm just a coward. I really need to get on their level when it comes to design sensibilities. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create my new team of disgusting mutated Pokemon children. Um, feel free to do this yourself, of course. Everybody's doing these, so you don't exactly need my permission. Um, and thank you for watching till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you to my patrons, including Bella Story, Kalpumpong, Clocker Construct, Dope Elephant Art, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Album, Greer the Animator, Imagine Creation, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Justin, Carla Tapia, Katie Marigold, Kira Jadern, the Blah Blah Blah, Micah Dactyl, Mr. Dr. Pence, Nora Cornelson, Nara Tothep, uh, Okamori, Ollie, Post-It Pixie, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, Yartsy Moose, Yaboy ST, and Zoe Stardust.